Welcome, I'm Margaret. If you haven't met me or seen me before here, I'm your teacher for tonight and I'm looking forward to our very last Facebook Live class of the year. This is the last free one of the year. There'll be some type of new format in 2022. I don't know if they're going to be free. They may be five or ten dollars um, or I'll throw a free one out once in a while. So stay tuned for that, uh, but I'm taking a little break for the rest of the year. This is the last one. So um, the format for class tonight is I will talk to you for a second, then I'm going to switch the camera down and I'll talk to you a little bit about my materials and the colors that we're going to use, but whatever you have is fine. You don't need to have the same colors as I do. And um, we're going to work real hard to finish this during the amount of time that we have, which is till 8 o'clock. Sometimes I try to get us done early, but it doesn't happen. So um, normally I would tell you that there's another one coming up, but since this is the last one, I can't tell you that, but I can say that tomorrow night um, I'm starting a new watercolor class for December, and it's a three-week class, so it's, it's only $60 instead of $80, and that's on Zoom, and it's also recorded, so you get a recording of every class. If you're interested, go to sacramentoartclasses.com, and you can click on the Art Classes tab and read about that. So that's watercolors tomorrow night at 5.30, and then Thursday there's an acrylics class, also three weeks long, also $60, also at 5.30. So um, the place to find out that or to sign up for a newsletter or find out anything else that you want to know is sacramentoartclasses.com. So I think that's all I have. If you're a new painter, welcome. Um, I do go a little fast so we can finish, but I'll try to pause here and there to get you caught up, okay? so. Um, Oh, if you have a question, put it in that text, that little chat section, um, and I'll try to answer them as we go. And of course, if you want to introduce yourself and tell you where you're from, that's great. Um, if I don't answer it live during class, it just means I didn't see it. And so I'll scroll back through those and try and answer with a follow-up text later on. So, okay, that's enough chatter. Let me move this back. So let's switch this back to the back wall. Oops, high tech here, and then we're gonna go look at the table and everything looks pretty level, I think. By the way, um, since we're on Facebook, there is a small delay between what you see and what I do. So I'm gonna do stuff and then I personally don't see it until a few seconds later. So if I accidentally get off um, camera, then I will eventually notice and fix that. And also because it is low tech here, I have to um, stand on a little chair when I want to zoom us in and so um, and then I usually have to do a little couple of adjustments to the camera to make sure that we're still on so that's what that's about um, and I think we're good okay let me rearrange a few things um, I have my water here I use a giant water jug and my brushes tonight's brushes will probably be mostly these three and actually mostly two of them this large black one is a number 12 round. It looks like that. I probably won't use that very much at all. I'll more likely be using this other black one, which is a number six round, and this small red one, which is a detail brush. It's about the size of a nail polish brush, but it has a little bit better tip on it. And then um, if you missed me saying earlier, you're going to need a bamboo skewer like this or um, a toothpick even, something that you can scrape with. If you don't have anything else, you can scrape with the end of your brush, but you have to be careful because usually they're painted and you don't want that paint to transfer onto your paper. So if you do have to use your brush for scraping, maybe like go like this and do it on a scratch piece of paper so that you can get any paint off of the brush and not onto your painting. Hopefully that made sense. Um, I like to have a rag and paper towel for blotting handy and I also like to have a mister because ahead of time it's a good idea to mist your paints to get them primed um, so that you're not really always working hard to get them juiced up when uh, when we're starting to paint. So I misted them a little bit ago but it dried a little so I'm putting that back on with just a little mist of water. I'm using Daniel Smith paints tonight. You can, you can be using whatever brand you want and whatever colors you want. Um, I will tell you my colors as we go along. I just love Daniel Smith. They don't pay me and I wish they did, but <laughs> um, they're just great paints. So um, 
that is that's why I use those okay so here's our painting for tonight and as much as I can I'm gonna try and put this side by side with what we're working on or at least show you this frequently so that you can see um, what what we're looking at um, this was the sketch that I made available to you it was on um, the Facebook page as a post and it was also in the events tab um, of there's a tab that says events and then inside that there's a discussion tab so hopefully you found this and then you traced it on your watercolor paper ahead of time so that we can just get started right away um, so let me get my glasses on and we're good to go I'll try to look again for questions as often as I can um, so that you don't miss out on anything or I don't miss on your out on your stuff and I see I'm seeing some shadows on here so I'm gonna try and make sure I don't have too much shadow obscuring your view here okay so um, we're gonna be working jumping around to different spots in here on purpose because when you paint with watercolor and let's say this leaf is wet as long as this leaf is wet we can't do this pair next to it because they'll bleed together so I got to jump around and skip sections so that uh, we take care of things um, and you know get as much going with the drying time that we have while this is drying we're working on something else so we're gonna jump around a little bit all right we're gonna do some leaves first and we'll do them in a wet into wet technique and what that means is I'm gonna zoom in a little for you what that means is that we're gonna get them wet with just water first no paint yet just water and that softens up the paper fibers a little bit and then we're gonna gouge them with that skewer so you'll need that right away or toothpick or whatever you've got um, and then we're gonna add paint okay so with one of your smaller brushes whatever feels comfortable to you could you please paint carefully inside the lines of I'll do this leaf up here at the top it looks like this and I'm just going to paint clear water on. If you need to switch to a smaller brush, you can. Um, when we do this wet into wet technique, what happens is the paint, um, once we put it on, will travel everywhere that it's wet, but will not travel to dry areas. And it's called making a water dam. So a dam that blocks, the dam blocks the water. So what that means is your paint will go everywhere that you've put clear water on, but it won't flow and bleed out into the dry section. So make sure that you only get wet what you want to have leaf color. So don't get any water on that apple, otherwise your leaf color will go into that apple. So if you need to, you can switch to a smaller one just to get into the little crevices. But if you miss anything and you don't get all the areas um, wet, we'll know that as soon as we put the color on and we can take care of it then. Okay, and so sometimes you have to go back a second time maybe if you didn't get things or if it takes you longer and it starts to dry up a little bit, you might go back a second time, especially with this technique where we're gonna use the skewer because we're actually gonna scar the paper. And so we want the fibers of the paper to get a little softened and, and getting them wet ahead of time softens them up. Okay, so. Um, if you're still painting water that's okay I'm just gonna do this part and talk while I do it so with the pointy end of whatever your tool is that you have um, I want you to think about the veins in the leaf so you can see on this one this darker green line that's in there that actually was not done with a paintbrush it was done with this skewer so I'm gonna scar up the paper like scratch it up and then the paint will gather in that valley where the scratch happened so I'm going to kind of imagine where the, the vein would be. This leaf has a nice little curve to it. So I think I would probably pull, pull the vein of the leaf from maybe down here, curve it up a little bit and come up to the point. You don't want to go so hard that you make holes in the paper or tear it. Just think about, um, I don't know, how hard do you want to do it? If you have if you have a really bad mosquito bite and it itches don't do it that hard <laughs> but you should probably be able to see a little line I'm sorry I'm trying to scrape something off of there a little piece of junk um, you should be able to see a little bit of the line if you didn't scrape it hard enough that all is not lost we can add some more scraping after the paint goes on 
Okay, so I think hopefully by now you have it um, scraped. And then you're gonna pick whatever green you want. Um, I'm gonna use a green called Green Appetite Genuine. I think, it, yeah, Green Appetite Genuine, which is a Daniel Smith color, and it's kind of like a nice fall green. It's uh, You might have sap green, that would be a good one to use. So while this is still damp, before this leaf dries out, I'm gonna just take my brush and paint, and you can see, because we've pre-wet that leaf, and we've gouged, um, Number one, because we pre-wet it, my paint is traveling and bleeding beyond where I put it on with the brush, right? So it's kind of blurring out and that's good. And it will continue to move out into the wet areas of that leaf. But I don't really wanna put the green all the way to the edge because I would like to have some fall color on there. So you can add a little red or a little orange or yellow, your choice. I'm picking a color, um, it's called uh, Aussie Red Gold. It's like an orangey color. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that out on the tips of these leaves. I actually wanna switch to a smaller brush for this. Um, I'm gonna put it out on the tips, so I'm imagining that the frost came or the cold weather came and just the tips of this leaf have started to turn. So it looks like this, I'll hold it a little closer. And since it's all still damp and we're working fast, this is gonna blend and blur together a little bit. But you can help it along if it looks blotchy. And the way to help it is with a clean, damp brush. So I've just rinsed out this um, little red one here. I just have water on here. And now I can kind of just pull my paint. I'm going out to those yellow points where I put the paint out at the, point, the end points of the leaf. And I'm just kind of pulling that inwards not doing a lot of manipulating. I just pulling it into the center of the leaf a little bit. I don't want it to be too overworked. So just little pulls and it's pretty wet, still gonna move around. But you can see how great that vein looks where I gouged and I gouged pretty firmly. So um, I even see a few chunks of paper that I pulled up that I'm gonna have to get off of there later. So that's the basic way to create a leaf. If you're really into it and you wanna have another more color in there, you could take something like a red and just with your really small brush, you could just dot a little bit of red here and there. The red that I'm using is called Deep Scarlet. And you want to do all this while things are still damp or wet. It shouldn't be wet like a lake like a puddle it's just got a shine to it and um, right here I have quite a lot of red so if that bothers you you can kind of tip your paper and let gravity pull it down um, you can do that kind of a thing because as long as this stays wet it will continue to move so if you go on to another leaf and this is wet for five more minutes there's still going to be a little movement in that paint um, on its own so you just want to always keep looking back to what you did to just see what's happening. Okay, let's see. Hey, Buffalo, New York is here. Galt. I don't know where Shell Knob is. That's a very interesting name. I'm gonna have to look that up. Altadena. Welcome everybody. Santa Rosa. Hey, Rayanne. Good to see you. So while you're working on that, because you probably still are, I'm gonna say to you that if you want to look at this sample for a second, down here where this leaf extends way down into here, we want to make this part a little darker down here where I'm pointing because it's in shadow and it's kind of buried back in there. So you can use a brown or you can use a darker green or a combination of those two while this is still damp. So I have a darker green. It's called undersea green. Um, if you're using Winsor Newton or, or something more uh, mainstream than Daniel Smith or uh, you might have hooker's green or you might have a sap green that you put on a little bit more full strength But I really put it on full strength there so you can see how dark it is and that's too dark for me But I did it on purpose because I want you to see how if you do that All you do is you get a, your brush clean it and you just have it wet Just water on there and like we did on the tips remember how I just pulled that paint around so I'm just kind of pulling it up into here a little bit and um and then I'm just gonna let it be. And that's my first leaf. Watercolor as it dries, lightens. So if you do something that seems like, whoa, I just added a huge shock of color and it's too much for me, um, it, will, it will fade as it dries, so don't worry too much. 
Okay, so you might still be messing with that leaf, but um, in a second we're gonna go on and we're gonna hit all three of these other leaves because they're not touching each other at all and so they're nice to just get all the leaves out of the way. And feel free to make them different colors. So this one here is more red and brown. Um, mix it up a little bit. Think about whatever your fall colors are. Okay, so same technique as before using your, uh, whatever brush you're comfortable with, the small, I'm going to use the small because it's in my hand, or the medium. Remember, you're just going to put clear water on the whole leaf, making sure that you stay inside of the lines of the leaf because you don't want those leaf colors to escape and bleed out into the pumpkin or whatever is surrounding it. So I'm interested to see your thoughts, um, and I know you're busy painting, but if you are fast and get through something and you want to put this in the chat box, I'm interested in your thoughts about tonight we did not do any of this drawing together. I asked you to do it ahead of time, and um, normally we do a little bit of time with the drawing. I think people like that, but it also eats up a lot of our painting time. And we almost never finish on time. So tonight I thought, let's make sure everybody draws it first. Did you have success with that? Were you able to find the tracing and, and do that and put it on your watercolor paper ahead of time? Um, so if you think about it, let me know. And let's see here. Um, Shanelin, am I saying it right? I'm going to show you right now how to do the veins in the leaf again because I'm going to do it on this one. And the first step is getting the leaf wet with just clear water and you may need to do a second layer. I saw some happy faces and hearts going up. I think maybe people liked the fact that they, um, or didn't miss drawing it together. Hopefully that's true. Um, if you wanted to paint this but you couldn't find the sketch, this is recorded. So after this is all done tonight, after the live is done, it'll be up as, um, a recording so you could watch it again or share it with a friend. Okay, so here we have this leaf. Think about the direction that the leaf is growing. So we don't want like just straight lines. How about a little curve? How about a little movement? So I'm looking at this longest point of the leaf here and I'm thinking maybe it curves a little bit like this. So I'll probably start back in here maybe by the pumpkin and pressing with my toothpick or my skewer, whatever you have. Don't gouge too hard. But you'll see, you're, gonna, you're basically scarring or denting the paper. So I just did a little line there, and then you can do a couple more to kind of indicate where you want those veins to go. And that's it. You do a little gouge, and then you're going to commit to whatever color that leaf will be. So this one, I'll do it a little bit darker. Um, I'll take that undersea green that I used up here. So for you guys, it might be hooker's green or... Um, I think there's a Windsor green. It's just whatever dark green you have. And um, I like to concentrate this first pass of the darker color, whatever color I want the vein to be. I kind of like to run it along where I think the vein is. And I'm not being careful to get all the way out to the edge of the leaf because I know it's going to bleed out there anyway. But um, I am trying to make sure that I got it pretty concentrated where the vein gouge is. And then rinse out my brush or switch to your smaller brush and then you can choose your other color. So I like that color I used before which was called um, Deep Scarlet. So I'm going to use that again on the tips and again this only works when everything is still damp or wet because if you do this on dry paper the paint that you're adding is not going to flow and move around. So you just touch, oops sorry I was a little off camera. You just touch it on here and since the paper is wet, it's gonna pull that paint all around and it'll flow around on its own. Uh, try to avoid the temptation to manipulate it a lot. Just let it be. Just put it on there and kind of let it do its thing. So it looks like this. And I'm gonna pause here for a second because I think I want to have you zoomed in even more on this. So you can see it a little bit better. So here we go. We'll zoom in a little bit more and readjust this for the camera. You should see the background here or in the background, like there's a 
cord on my microphone and I have to get it out of the way and get stuck in my hair and all this crazy stuff. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to let this rest for a minute while you catch up. And let's see, what is the question here? It generally works to redraw. Tonight it meant we'll have to do actual painting later and we'll do with recording. You are such a... Oh, my goodness. Thanks. That's a nice compliment. I was just reading your your notes there. Well, thanks. That, that was nice. Okay, so do you remember last time when I said if things don't... Um, if you feel like something is too shocking red or too much color, how you could get a wet brush just with water, a wet brush, and kind of pull that around a little bit. So I'm just getting into some of that red and pulling it around into the green. Not too much because I don't want to overwork it, but um, I want to help it travel around and maybe not be so, so red. I think I'd like to have a little bit of brown in here too. My brown is called brown iron oxide. You might have Van Dyke Brown, you might have um, like a, a raw umber, or maybe it's a burnt umber. I can never remember. You'd think I would know that by now. but So I'm going to touch a little bit of the brown down in here, right at the base of this pumpkin, because I'm thinking this is more of a shadow area, and I want it to be deeper there. You could even run a little bit up on your vein again. Or up to the tips because sometimes when you have a leaf that's more brown and crunchy um, if you want you can add a little yellow or orange I've got a beautiful yellow which is Hansa yellow deep let me show you what it looks like it looks like this it's like a golden yellow let's see are we on camera there we go it's a golden yellow this other one is more of a daffodil yellow but this guy right here like a golden fall yellow I'm gonna use that you could you might have a yellow ochre but just for kicks, I'm going to just touch that on in a couple places. And you can see all I did was just touch it on there and that's it. I'm going to stop and let it do its own thing. Leaves are so fun to do because they just, they do, they, they do their own thing. But how nice does it look with that little yellow on there? Okay, so that's going to be it for that one. And again, here's a look at the finished piece. So in case you want to have kind of some reference point. While I'm thinking about it, notice how this pumpkin, I left some white on here. I'll talk about that when we get there, but um, I just want you to put that in your mind and think about that. Here underneath this pumpkin, there are two more leaves that we're going to do. So it's going to be the same technique. I did veining on this one here. You can see there's vein in that, but I didn't put one on here. So you can if you want or not. I mean, it's like, it's a cool technique, but if you feel like it's overkill and you don't want so much, then um, then you don't need to do it on all those, okay? So I am going to come, come in with my small brush again, and as long as you don't have these leaves touching each other or anything else that's wet, we can take care of all these right now. So here we go again with the clear, just clear, clean water on here. Sometimes I've seen people tint their water or their water gets a little bit dirty and when they're doing this wet into wet technique and that's okay because remember when watercolor dries it's lighter as it dries so if your water is slightly dirty you're not even going to be able to tell but it could be helpful to you um, to use dirty water because then you can see where your water is <laughs> okay so that's wet oops and do I want a vein in here I think where the central vein on this one would be is, is under the pumpkin. So instead, I think I'll pull some from the points just inwards a little bit and just be okay with that. What color do we want for this one? Uh, how about a really, let's see, this pumpkin's going to be orange. So I want it to be kind of a brighter orange. How about I make this really dark? So I'm going to do um, that red that I was using, which is called Deep Scarlet. And ooh, before I do that, I'm going to introduce a little purple in here because later on there will be some purple. So I'm going to introduce this purple, which what color is it? Uh, I don't have it listed. Shoot, I don't have it on my list here, but it's a nice, beautiful purple looks like this. It's 
kind of grapey colored and I'm in fact going to use that on the grapes so when you are using a color it's nice to bounce it around to more than one place in your painting so I'm going to use that purple here where I think I put the veins and back in here where it's kind of shadowy and I, I think you might think well that's weird there's not a purple leaf but it will turn out cool in the end it's just going to look like a darker uh, shadow on this red so now that I did the purple first then I'm going to get that deep scarlet that I used on the tips of the other um, leaves and I'll put it here on the tips and it's going to blend in with that purple and it's going to give us a nice darkness behind the pumpkin and if it's too crazy for you remember you just get your clear water you can drag some of this back in to just you know take away some of the punch of that really red and you can brown it up too so let's get a little brown this is the uh, brown iron oxide or maybe you have Van Dyke brown and I'm just gonna like we touched on the yellow on this leaf I'm just gonna touch on some brown here kind of back in this back in the underneath part because that'll help us to feel like it's shadowy in the shadowy area so let's hold it a little closer so you can see better it's pretty um, spotty right now and it hasn't all flowed together so you can tip your paper and help it flow so I'm tipping my paper and letting gravity pull it down or if it bugs you take that brush with just a little a little water on it and just touch it on just dot it on try not to be try not to just rub that paint around just dot some water and let it flow and do its own thing see what that looks like if you like it cool if you don't maybe you want to throw in a little orange or yellow so let me dot in some orange and then I'm going to be done because I don't want to put too many colors in there I don't want too much orange because my pumpkin's going to be orange anyway so um, try to the trick with watercolor is to just less is better if you overwork things they get muddy and your colors get weird and just muddy so that's all I'm going to do I may have even made it muddy but I'll live so we'll be okay Okay, um, I'm going kind of fast. Can I find out from you if you're feeling okay? Um, maybe some thumbs up or something if you're ready for me to go on to this next leaf over here. It'll be the exact same technique. I just uh, don't want to freak you out <laughs> and go way, way, way too fast. I'll take a drink of my tea. Hey, Vina, how are you? How are you, Mrs. Bush? Are you painting? my friend and co-worker okay so I see lots of thumbs up that means I can go on to this other leaf so once again same technique paint it with just water and maybe you're even ahead of me and you already did this I don't know maybe you're a superstar painter and you're super fast um, tomorrow night I have a new watercolor class starting it's on zoom there are spaces left in class still if you go to sacramentoartclasses.com and you click on the art classes tab you can read about it so there's a three-week watercolor class starting tomorrow night at 5 30 california time and on thursday there's a three-week acrylic class also at 5 30 and since they're only three weeks they're 60 dollars plus you get a recorded version of every uh class and that will come as an email so if you're interested those are up and um, the watercolor class is going to be a beautiful peony flower and um, the acrylic is a cute little fall bird and everything is on there that um, that you need all the supplies are listed there so if you're interested you can go there okay so this is wet here's the sample again in case you need to see it and so I'm going to take my little tool here and I'm going to gouge myself. Let's see, how do I want this to go? I don't, I always try to not do super straight. I try to do a little curve to it to just give, just to give it a little feeling of motion. And then I'm adding a few little um, veins off to the side. Okay, and it's tricky if you're if it's your first time gouging you don't know how hard to do it and sometimes you might want to you might maybe you go too much and maybe you don't go enough 
If you don't see anything, it means you didn't go enough. And, oh, I was going to tell you, if you don't go enough, how to fix that, here's how. Let's say on this one I didn't do enough work on there. And so when I come in with my paint, this paint color is called green gold. It's like a really interesting yellow green. It's pretty, pretty uh, nuclear. So you'll see, look at that. So I'm going to have to um, tone it down, but I just wanted to show you. So here I'm taking that and I'm trying to concentrate it on where I think I made those gouges for the veins, but let's say it didn't show up enough, right? There is no reason that you can't, you, why you can't gouge right now. So if I wanted another vein right here, I could gouge another little section right there and then take some of that green and put it on and, and it will make a new vein for me. So if you see, once you add your color, like, man, I didn't get enough, just add a little bit more. You can do it at that point too, you know, with your pass with the water. Okay, so this is very nuclear. <laughs> it's very bright. I need to tone it down a little bit. So I'm just gonna try some of the other greens that I already used. This is the green appetite, which I used a lot on this one. So I'm gonna put that in here, kind of along where I have the vein, and that'll help deepen it, deepen the color. And maybe down here underneath the pumpkin too, I'll do that. And Let's have some more orange and red. The orange that I'm using is Aussie red gold. And I'm gonna just touch that on along the outer edge of the leaf. And you do not have to do the whole, don't feel like you have to do a whole border on this. Just do it here and there, maybe along the tips where frost came and, um, and tur turned the color on this leaf. Don't, it doesn't have to go all around the whole thing. Sometimes even, we even see like this, a little spot in the middle. So you could do that too. Okay, here it is closer. Judy, I see you're saying that you're a little behind. I'm sorry. I'm really, since this is our last one of the year, my goal for us is that we are done by the end of class tonight. We're gonna finish. Do you believe it? Do you think it will happen? I don't know. Okay, so I want a little red, so I went back into that, uh, that what is it deep scarlet that i've been using put that here and there this almost looks like a grape leaf to me i grew up in napa and so um you know we see grape leaves everywhere there and there are these most beautiful colors right now my friend that lives there is putting stuff up on facebook with all the pretty colors okay there and um just to make this pumpkin pop out, because it's gonna be that nice bright orange, I'm gonna go back into the brown that I used on this leaf here, and I'm gonna put a little bit of brown that close to the pumpkin, just to make it a little dark. It, it kind of looks outline-y right now. But remember, remember what we do? If you have too much color and you feel like you messed up and you've got too much color, you can do, you can tip the paper so that gravity, I'm tipping it downhill. Where's my hand showing you? I'm tipping it downhill like this. So gravity is starting to pull that brown around. You could do that. Or you can take that clear water brush and just a little help to kind of blend that around. And now we have a nice dark area around the pumpkin. And those are all our leaves. So you catch up for a minute while I look at this one and kind of figure out what we're gonna do next. We're gonna probably do some of the basket and we're gonna do the wheat, I think. I think, but I gotta think about it for a minute. And also you're gonna see me doing something here because I see that I forgot to draw in. Um, there's a pomegranate and I didn't get it drawn in properly. So I need to draw that in while you're catching up. It's right here, but for whatever reason, I didn't make that happen, so. Let me, let me take care of that right now. It's got like kind of this little thing happening. And I'll have it come up here. I'll have it come up to the base of that other, that leaf. Um, if you are drawing um, with pencil and your watercolor goes over the top of the pencil, then you can't erase the pencil after that. So if it bugs you, um, make your pencil light 
it, it's okay. I mean, it's perfectly acceptable in the whole world of watercolor that pencil marks show, but some people don't like it. So you, if you, if you get it too dark and it's going to bug you, erase it back a little bit before we get going. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to do some basket, and then we're going to do some of these outlying things, like we'll do some grapes, and this little pumpkin, and the wheat. So, how about we do grapes next? Is that okay with you? I'm going to turn my paper because I don't want to be in this wet leaf. So if it messes you up, um, you could turn your paper too, but I'm just trying to put the grapes closer to me. And let me make sure that we're on camera still here. Okay, so again, this is what the grapes look like. They have lots of different colors in there. They have a beautiful deep purple. They have a little bit of probably the red that I was using and um, some of the orange. So that gives us a nice color blend. And you'll also see it in this plum right here too. So, um, notice on the grapes how we have a little bit of a light outline that shows you the in between the grapes. So um, the way to achieve that is we're actually going to leave a little small bit of unpainted paper. So instead of doing all the grapes in one pass, we're going to do each individual grape on its own. And once you learn how to do one, you can go through and do all of them. So I'll pick one of these larger ones first. And here's the grape. Again, the clear water deal, wet into wet. Um, whatever your purple is, you might have Windsor Violet, you might have this mysterious purple that I can't fi figure out the name of, you might have Imperial Purple. So I'm gonna use some Imperial Purple on this. And by the way, here is the top of the paper. The light is coming from the top, so I want the top of my grape to be a little bit lighter. I guess I should paint it this way so that's easier for you. So down here on the bottom, I'm gonna put some Imperial Purple and then I'm gonna leave that top part of it unpainted right now. Let's see if I can zoom you in a little bit more. There we go. I'm leaving it unpainted for a second on purpose. And right now I'm just using one color. So let's pick another grape. Try to get one a little bit away from that one. Here's this guy right here. I'm gonna get it wet. This goes a little faster because we don't have any gouging happening on this. And again with the same purple, whatever you choose, your, your dark purple. Whoops. You can see how when we get the paper wet first, boy, that paint really swims around. And the tops are still, you know, mostly unpainted. And let's do this guy down here. So notice all these grapes that I'm doing, they're separated by another grape. So they're not a wet grape touching another wet grape. Um, it just helps us have more control that way. And let's see, I'll do this guy up here at the top too because he's not touching anybody and he or she is not touching anybody. So get that wet first. Try to stay out of the pear because you don't really want to have this purple from the grape get into that pear. And I'm working fast on purpose because I need these to stay wet because we're going to go in with some other colors and so they have to stay wet for that blend to happen. There we go. That grape looks a little globby. Kind of a weird shape. Okay, what time is it, people? Let's see, it is 7.09. Oh, we're doing great. Okay, now, before those dry, here's the sample again. See all the different colors in the grapes? So see if you can pick a different purple, or if you don't have more than one purple, how about you pick a red or uh, yeah, you have a red, so pick a red. Um, I'm going to do, since I'm using that, that red already, I'll use stick with that same one. It's a very deep, deep red, deep scarlet. So touch this red into some of the purple. Don't put it up there where it's still white. Put it in somewhere where it's purple. Okay, so a little bit there, a little bit on this guy. And what it's doing is it's blending in with the purple but we're still saving that area up at the top for something else. Okay, so I touched it on. It's hard to see because there's reflection for you, but you can see how it's starting to 
develop an interesting color, not all one color. And then up at the very top, it's a little tricky because um, sometimes when you mix purple with like a yellow or an orange, you get a funky color, but we're gonna go for it anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go back to that orange that I used in the leaves. My orange is called Aussie Red Gold, but you might have, um, you might even be using like Burnt Sienna or something, which is a nice orange, or Quinacridone Burnt Sienna, which is an even nicer orange. Okay, so now I'm looking for those areas that, <clears throat> that are still white. And I'm just gonna touch the tiniest little bit of this orange up at the top, just for a little hint of, I wouldn't do too much down here because this one's kind of hidden by other grapes, but I'm just giving a little color up there. Okay, and as a close-up, you can see how it's still blotchy and there's still like, maybe the whole grape isn't covered with color yet. Sorry, I see that's off camera, I'm moving it over. There we go. Okay, so remember how we fixed it on the leaves? You get your brush wet, not too wet, and now you can just come in and just do a little <laughs> I'm getting weird making these sound effects, but I'm just doing a little slight blend on these, just a little bit. You know, I don't care what color I got into because they're all gonna blur together anyway. So for now, this is what my grapes look like. That purple is gonna continue to flow around and I can even tip it, tip the paper, so gravity is gonna pull that purple up. It's hard for you to see when I tip <laughs> on camera. I know I'm really off camera right now, sorry. But when, basically what I'm saying is turn it upside down and let some of that purple try to flow up into the top of the grapes, okay? So as you're working on that, let me talk to you about this sample grapes. Now, what happened on here, remember I said I was leaving this little unpainted area so that we have some um, differentiation or outline, I guess you could call it, in between the, the grapes. So this is gonna happen in the next step. You can see right up here, they all blur together because I didn't leave that in there. So we know there's different grapes there, but you can't really differentiate them from each other. But here, because I left that little bit of unpainted area. I wanna see if you can get some of that in there just so that your grapes are not one big purple blob. So the, the exact same technique is gonna apply that we did to the other ones, but just try not to go all the way up to the neighboring grape. So keep your water a little bit tighter inside of the grape. So let's see if I can make it happen with this one. So here I'm pre-wetting it but I'm not touching those two grapes that are next to it. Let me get my dark purple first, put that in, and once, I, once you put the color in, you'll see where you left your paper dry, because you can see how it, my paint is not flowing all the way to the other grape. It's because I left that little bit dry. Now it's messy, but in a second, you'll see it better. I'll zoom you in even more. And I still have purple on my paintbrush here, so I'm going to pull it around, and this is the little cheat. You know, I can go up closer into the area that I left dry, but I can be more precise with this little brush, and I'm still leaving that outline, but I, um, I got us a little bit closer, okay? Hope this all makes sense. So here comes my other, I'm, I'm kind of choosing a different purple here. Um, I meant to get red, but I got a different purple, so now I gotta make this different purple around different places. Okay, so that's your second color. Maybe it's gonna be your red. So here comes my red. Not going all the way up to that other grape. And last but not least, we had that little touch of orange up at the top, still keeping the separation between the grapes. It's gonna look weird to you at, for now because it's gonna look like white stripes, but at the end, we will kind of blend that a little bit later when it's dry. So for now, this is your job. Let me fix this a little bit. Okay, so you're gonna do the rest of these grapes while I do the rest of mine. And um, we'll see how it goes. Don't forget you can put comment, you can put questions in the comments there if um, you have a question for me. Okay, first get it wet, and then comes the imperial purple, whatever your darkest purple is. Then I used that nice red, little touch of that. All I did was dot that on there. 
then my orange. You know that grapes are not orange, but it just gives us a nice little hit of light, so that's why I like to do it. Um, I have this other purple that's super cool that I'm putting in here too, so if you see me adding something else, it's this other purple called something that I didn't label, so I, don't, I can't tell you what it is. Really important to, to keep that border of dry paper in between these, otherwise they're all just gonna melt right together into a blob. But if that happens, the good news is, is that you can always watch this video again later and do another one. By the way, my friend Marsha, who I don't think is here tonight, but she paints with me all the time, um, always tells me to remind people that you have a, fa a, um, a, a Facebook group. So if you go to, if you search Sacramento Art Classes Students on Facebook, it'll show you the Facebook group for any of my classes. And you have to request to get into the group, but of course I will approve you because you're here. And um, I've made that because some people like to post their finished paintings, but they don't want to post them for the entire world to see. So if you decide you want to share this at the end, it would be great if you post it in there. Um, just Sacramento Art Classes students. So that doesn't go on my regular page, it's just the group page. And other people can see your stuff. And it's a super nice group and everybody is very supportive and you'll get a bunch of compliments. So um, I'm, I'm bad about remembering to post mine when I'm done, uh, but I'll try to. And if I don't, then I'll put it just on the regular Facebook page. So that's available to you if you wanna do it. the little border of dry paper still in between and here comes some red maybe this other purple have some fun you know part of the cool thing of watercolor is unexpected colors um, in your work like people always want to make shadows gray but shadows can be turquoise or purple and highlights on grapes can be orange if you want. <laughs> it's up to you. One day it would be cool if I could figure out how to set up the home studio here so that the camera will show like this sample in the corner for you and it will also show my palette so you could see me dipping into paint because for me anyway I don't know about you but I like to see what the painter is dipping into and I don't have a way to show that especially when we're on a close-up so there must be a way where I can have like split screen or you know like on the football games you have screen in screen or whatever they call it so that you can see um, both what I'm dipping into and my sample and my current painting. Okay, so those are all, mostly all the grapes. This area right here is probably a grape, but it's kind of also background. So I'm not going to, um, the way I'm going to handle that one is I'm just going to kind of paint that area in just with dark. I'm not going to do this whole treatment that I did with all the different colors on the grapes. I'm just going to kind of outline my pear, you know, follow the line of the pear, and then fill this in dark. It will trick us into believing that it's more grapes back there, but it's just establishing a nice dark. So I'll just put a little dark in there. And I follow the line of the pear up here. I messed up the pear. You can see right here, this grape at the top. So if that happens to you, try to correct it so that your pear has a good shape. There we go, that's better. And then these little guys down here at the bottom, it's up to you. You can just have them, you can paint them with the exact same technique that you did with these grapes, or you can paint them just dry. So um, I'm gonna just paint them on dry paper so I have my, the dark purple that was on there, imperial purple, and I'm just painting them. And I notice again, I did not 
do anything on the tops. I left them white so that I could come in with my other purple or your red or whatever it is that you want and just give a little difference in the color. It just makes it, I wish you could see better in the light here, it just makes it more interesting when it has more than one color to it. Yeah, it's really hard to see on the camera. And then with that same color on my brush, I'll just add the stems. So it's just like this. That's it. Okay. We'll come back to those later when they're dry and we'll handle all those um, white outlines later. But since you're doing, you're going to do pretty much the same thing on this plum that you did on these grapes, I'm going to have us do this right now too. So just think of it as a larger grape, but notice how right here I, I gave it some shape by having a nice glow here, a nice highlight. So um, do you want me to do that now? Thumbs up if you're ready to go or no thumbs up if you need a minute to do some more grapes before I go on to the plum. So that was thumbs up if you're ready. Okay, I saw just a few, so I'm gonna pause here and let people catch up a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna look back and see if anybody asked me any question in I love it that you guys tell me where you're from. It's so fun to, s I still don't know where Shell Knob is. Michael, where's Shell Knob? I have to look that up. Okay, I don't see any questions, but I see a lot of people saying hi, so hi. Okay, I saw a few more thumbs up, so I'm gonna take this chance to go on. Uh, I'm gonna switch to a slightly larger brush because this plum is slightly larger than the grapes and I can cover more territory faster with a larger brush. So same exact technique, get it wet to keep the pumpkins next to it dry. We don't want water on the pumpkins. So the third graders at school are going to be doing something, not with me, um, but with a different, with some uh, volunteer moms, tomorrow they're going to be doing a watercolor painting. So I'm interested to find out what they're doing. And their teacher is here tonight in class, Mrs. Bush. So um, I'll be able to go and spy and see what they're doing. So that'll be neat. I see that, is it Shraddha? You're saying that yours is not coming so neat as my color mixing. It sometimes depends on what colors you use. Um, sometimes colors don't blend easily together and that's really part of just getting to know your paints. Like you might try to mix a blue and a yellow to make a green, but maybe the blue is not a good one for mixing with. And so I think it's one of those things where you just have to get to know your paints and practice them. Um, and wet into wet is a very loose technique. I mean, you really have to give up control and let the paints do what they want. So. Um, it's a good exercise in letting go of control, I guess. <laughs> All right, here come, maybe, maybe you'll have more success on the plum. I don't know. So here I have my dark purple again. That was the imperial purple and I'm going to put it down here towards the bottom, just like I did with the grapes, because that's the bottom or the darker area of this plum. And now I've got to switch to my smaller brush because it's just too, too much. Okay, and let's get that red again that we used, whatever red you had. I'll put a little red up here on the top, leaving the very tippy top unpainted for now. Let's see, I'll have some like this. Maybe I'm gonna take this red around the bottom, outline that, make sure that I have a nice line up against the pumpkin and it's believable. 
And now Shell Knob, Missouri in the Ozarks. That is cool. Welcome. That's neat. I bet you get some good fall color there. Okay, here comes that orange. So here, this is gonna be crazy, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna circle this orange up and around the top of that plum there. And it is wild, it is very colorful, but it'll tone down in just a second because I'll get my purple back in here again a little bit. Oops, wrong one. And let me get this other top here. And I'm just kind of dotting, like dotting with my brush, a little purple around here. And then I'm gonna leave it be because I wanna have that glow there. Here's the sample. And I wanna have that glow of orange or yellowy orange as the highlight. In a second, I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can do, but I gotta have this be slightly drier before I can do it. So I'll pause while you catch up but there's a neat thing that you can do with just water to make this glow better. Um, as I'm pausing and letting it dry, I'm tipping my paper a little bit. So actually where my finger is, is kind of downhill. So I'm tipping the upper left hand corner because I'm trying to get all the darks to run towards the pumpkin. I want to have it be, you know, in shadow there. So I'm using gravity to pull those dark paints down a little bit. I don't want to do too much because I don't want it to just drip, but I'm getting a, a big puddle here. You can't really tell, but there's a puddle there of the dark paints. And now here comes that trick I was talking about. With your brush and just water on it, I switched to a slightly larger brush. You can just touch right where you want that highlight and you put a little water on there. Maybe you have to do it twice. And what that does, that addition of the water into the area that had started to dry, makes it pushes the paint away. So adding a drop of water here pushes the rest of the paint a little bit away from that spot. So it's gonna give us a little bit more of a highlight just by putting that spot in there, that spot of water in there. It's kind of a weird thing, but it's, it's, um, it's helpful. And then um, I'm gonna lay it flat for a minute. This, puddle is gonna to start to merge back outward. So I'm gonna babysit it. Every once in a while I'm gonna tip it up, but I'll, I'll kind of babysit it here a little bit so that um, I can kind of control what it's doing a little bit. Now I'm kind of curving it around. Can you see that dark fall? It's started to slide up there a little bit and now I'm gonna pull it back down by tipping it. So sometimes when you're painting and you're not in a rush like with this class and you have to finish it in 90 minutes, you can just walk away and eat your lunch or something and maybe put something like, um, I don't know, whatever you have, like a little pencil or an eraser or something under the corner of your paper to leave it tipped up on that side so that you have the slant there happening um, while you're away and while it's having a chance to dry. Okay, so boy, it's happening again. It's 7.30, we have half an hour left and we have a long way to go because those grapes and leaves took a long time, but the rest of this is gonna be quick, quicker. So I need you to um, hurry up. <laughs> um, I wanna do the, uh, the cornucopia basket now, and then I can't do the, the oats right now because, or the grain, whatever this is, wheat, because this plum is too wet, so we can't do that yet, but we are gonna do, um, I think we're gonna be able to do, well, at least start with this basket and then maybe the pomegranate or something. So I gotta zoom out a little bit so you can see. Let's see, how do I, let's go this way. Oops, the wrong way. Okay. Here's what the basket looks like. Notice, please, that this part here is in shadow. Now, this is a beginning painting, so I did not like put shadow or background or table or anything. I just wanted to give you the feeling of the cornucopia. So this is purple. It's hard to tell maybe, but this shadow is gonna be purple and the inside shadowing is purple too. So if you feel weird, I'm giving you a heads up that you're gonna have purple on your brown basket. Okay, so. Switch over to a little bit larger brush just for a minute. Um, 
I'm going to use this number 12 for a second because it's going to cover a lot of territory, but then I'm going to go back to this 6 that I was using. And I have a color called, what is it called? Well, I don't have it labeled. I think it's probably Titan Buff. It looks like this. It's kind of like a yellowy, creamy kind of color. Now, chances are you don't have that. So you might have something like this, which is um, probably a yellow ochre. Uh, I'll show you another yellow ochre that you can see a little bit better. Maybe, maybe this one, okay? Um, it's like a dirty yellow. So uh, if, you ha if you don't have any of those, you can use whatever your brown is, but really, really dilute it, water it down a lot. So what I mean is this, like here's a brown right here. And I'm going to put it over here on the side in my mixing well. And now I'm just going to add a bunch of water and really water it down. So this is how you can get around it if you don't have that color that I showed you first. You can really water down a brown. Okay, so um, you can put a little, let's put a little water on this first. But we don't need to be as careful on this because it's a basket. And if it's choppy and maybe you left some parts dry, that's okay. We don't care on this on this thing. Um, and let's also do it along the rim of the basket here. Try to don't get it on your fruits. You want to keep your fruits and your leaves and whatever else dry. I'm not doing the inside yet. Um, I lie. I will do the inside. I'll do all this basket. So because this leaf up here, mine is dry. If your leaf is dry, do the leaf. I mean, do the inside of the basket too. So we're getting water on all of it. And again, if you have any places where you didn't get it wet, we're okay. Because this is kind of, it helps the, give us the basket texture. Okay, so it's all wet. And now I'm going to get that light color that I talked to you about. Or you're going to use your watered down brown. We're going to paint in the direction that the basket is. It's rounded and it goes this way. So we're not doing up and down like painting the fence and we're not doing horizontally. So as you lay this on here, kind of follow the direction of the basket. That's really light. You could barely see it. Let me do some more. Like this. If you... Um, no, I, t I take that back. I was going to say something, but now I'm not going to say it. So just... Cover up your whole basket with the color. You can cover up this whole rim of the basket with that color too. If you notice on mine, there are areas that are still white and unpainted, but since they're wet, we know that that wet paint will flow into there and we don't care. We don't need it to be all covered just yet. Okay, so that went pretty quickly. Now, um, if you use this color or if you use the watered down brown, I'm going to say to you, now I need you to switch to a little bit less watered down brown. So here's my watered down brown. I just want some brown. I don't want it all runny, so I'm just going to dip into the paint and just get brown. Again, sample. And... Um, Remember, you're following the direct... Oops, shoot. Hold on. I just painted on my shampoo. Hold on. Okay. Look, at, I just painted on my shampoo. I had to get that off of there. Let me show you what to do if you make a mistake like that. While it's still wet, get a wet brush and blur it out <laughs> a little bit. There we go. Because <laughs> it was staining my uh, previously painted one. So we took care of that. Okay. Too many things are going on. All right. So here comes the brown. Now, I want you to put in some accent colors. This is woven. It's like, you know, an over under over under kind of basket weaving thing. So come from here maybe and give us some swoopy marks. And because your basket is wet, it's going to flow together. It's not going to be really crisp and that's okay. And from the bottom up, And we'll do just a little bit on here. We'll come back later and fix these up, but this is just giving us some kind of form and movement. So that's it. It's pretty sloppy and that's okay for now. 
Then with the brown that you still have on your brush, let's fill this in. Careful of your leaf if it's wet and try to stay off your apple. I'm going to take just a little bit more brown and darken it up in here just a little bit. And then if you know me, guess what I'm going to say to do next? Put a different unexpected color in there. So you can go back to that purple that we used and touch on a little, not too much because it's wet. So keep that purple really here. Don't let it get too far out towards the rim of the basket because then it'll flow into everything, into the whole rest of it. We don't want that. We want it to stay in this way. So you may even have to tip or if you feel like you need a little more control, you could just take a little Kleenex and just blot just a tiny bit just to kind of dry things up there a little bit. And then it won't flow as, as much. It'll, it's got a little bit of a dry barrier. Okay, and that's all we're gonna do on the basket for just now because we have to let that dry before we can do anything else, but we need to keep watching this. Um, so as we move on to the next part, you need to keep watching right here because if that purple starts flowing out too far, get your blotter, your Kleenex or your paper towel or whatever you have and blot that out of there. Okay, next. Oh boy, it gets to be hard at this point because so many things are touching other things that are wet. I think I can do this pomegranate right now. If I have to, I'm gonna leave that little strip of unpainted dry paper in between the basket and the pomegranate because I don't want the pomegranate color to run. So for this, I'm gonna use a, the smallest brush and I'm gonna do the pomegranate dry. I'm not getting it wet first, so choose your color. I'm gonna start out by using that same red, but um, pomegranates have a pinkishness to them. So if you have a pinky red, um, we're gonna try and use that later, or if you don't, we'll use a purple. So here I go, full strength red in here. Actually, I need a little tiny bit of water on my brush. And then um, my leaf is dry, so I know I can go all the way up to the leaf. If I just did this whole thing just this red, it would it would be a beautiful red, but it's gonna be too flat. It's we gotta give it some dimension. So that's why I always put in more than one color in here. Into, you noticed on all the leaves, on all those grapes and the plum, everything gets more than one color in there just to add interest and keep it from just being boring and flat. So here I have to be careful by my basket. I have to keep a little space or else my basket will turn red. And you can always go back later when things are dry and doctor up things, fill in those little, little spaces. I messed up my pumpkin, let me fix it. I kind of cut into the pumpkin a little bit farther than I wanted, but that's what happens sometimes. Okay, so that is a very deep, deep red pomegranate. So this is where I said if you have like a pinky red, you might have something like a quinacridone um, rose or a rosy red. So here's my pinky red, it looks like this. You can see it's got like a nice kind of pinkness to it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that and touch it on. It's pretty subtle. I'm tipping my paper because this new paint that I'm introducing is gonna kind of push the other paint out of the way. So there's gonna be a little bit of lighter up there, lighter um, red. And then remember when we used that yellow, that kind of beautiful golden yellow on the leaves earlier? I'm gonna take a touch of yellow and just touch that on the pomegranate, kind of maybe right up at the top and tip my paper around, let it flow around a little bit. And now the pomegranate has a nice highlight that will swim around and do its own thing and we don't have a boring flat pomegranate. If you wanna get really technical and wow everybody, you can take a little bit of purple down here and darken it. I just put a tiny touch of purple. And then remember how if you get your brush just with water, you can pull that around. Let's add a little bit more so that it just gives some depth there. It makes it feel like that pomegranate is kind of 
shadowy at the bottom, uh, at its base. Okay, so um, for sake of time, I need to use my heat gun to get this to dry so I can show you some other things. So this is your chance to catch up and or if you have a heat gun or if you have a hair dryer, this is your chance to run and get it and dry this up a little bit because I'm gonna try and power us through the rest of it. We have 20 minutes left and I we're a little stuck because some of the parts are still pretty wet and we have to dry them out. So if you're frustrated though because you don't have a heat gun or you don't have a hair dryer um, and your painting is still wet. Remember, this is recorded for you. So if you have to pause now and maybe just watch the rest and then come back to the video later and paint the rest, you can. So all is not lost. I hate for people to feel frustrated and wanna give up because I have to move kind of fast. So you're gonna hear a little noise for a minute while I use this heat gun um, you can get these at Michael's. I usually wait until there's a 50% off sale. Or you can get them at, um, we have Harbor Freight Tools here. You can probably get it at Home Depot or Lowe's, but they look a little different. So um, here we go. Okay, that was pretty quick. I love heat guns because they're so fast, but um, if you've never used one, be careful. You can actually set things on fire and scorch paper and melt plastic and all that. So you need to keep it moving and maybe keep it a little bit away from your, your paper. I was teaching a class once and a lady had a canvas up on an easel and I was you know, standing at the front of the room and she was at the back and I noticed that there was a brown spot growing on the back of her canvas and that was because she was burning the paper <laughs> through, all the way through. So, I mean burning the canvas from the front side through to the back. Oops, I need a little more drying right here. Okay, all right, so now let's do, um, I wanna do this big pumpkin first because while it's drying, we'll do these other two and then hopefully it'll be dry enough, enough for us to do the pear or we'll do this apple first and then the pear. Okay, so um, pumpkins, here's the sample again. We wanna see lots of different colors on the pumpkins. Down here we got a darker orange and up here we got highlight. Here we left some white. Um, areas unpainted and this guy has a lot of yellow on it so let's start with that big boy and um, I'm gonna say let's not wet into wet at first we're just gonna go right into the dry paint so I'm gonna use that beautiful Aussie red gold which is that really cool orange color this is what it looks like in the pan looks like this and this is a Daniel Smith color I love that one um, so whatever your orange is, use that. I'm using a bigger brush because I want to get it done quickly. Um, and remember, we're painting just like the basket, how we painted in the direction that it flows, we're gonna paint this pumpkin, each little lobe or each little section kind of with its own directional paint. So we're not just painting a fence straight up and down. So this is what I mean. We come over here and we're gonna give it a curve. And you see, I've left some white, but don't worry because I'm gonna go back and take care of that. Here's the next one. I'm gonna give this one a curve. Then this guy is big, so I gotta curve both ways like that. And you keep going all the way around your pumpkin. If you leave white, remember, don't worry, we're gonna come back for that. And if you have to switch to a smaller brush up here because it's harder to control, then you can. Don't make it too hard on yourself. So I'm gonna to switch to smaller. 
and here's this is my stem right no this is part of the pumpkin and then this last section right here I'm being careful not to paint on that stem uh, since I have a smaller brush in my hand I'm gonna hit this guy again right here okay so that's the main paint on here now you're going to take your brush rinse it out so it's just water and you're going to clean it up with just water so you're going to go back over everything and paint out to the edge where you need it to go and what this will do for you is it'll give you a little bit of stripiness in the pumpkin which gives the separation between those lobes and then it's not just like a blob of orange um, because what you already put down is starting to dry and then when we go back and clean it up we get these stripes that are left behind and it really helps the pumpkin look interesting and it's kind of a way to make the pumpkin happen fast and again if you have to switch to an even smaller brush to make it easier for yourself do that okay so there's my pumpkin if I was going fancy, I would um, put darker down here. If you don't have time, don't do it. But I'm going to do it so you can see, and then you can add it later if you want to. Because I know you're trying to catch up, and I don't want you to get frustrated. So I'm using some of the... Uh, what do I want to use? Uh, there's a color called Burnt Sienna, which is a kind of a darker orange. It's like a brown orange. looks like this. So I'm going to use some burnt sienna on this pumpkin and all I'm going to do is um, from the bottom up I'm going to just put some and I don't have to go all the way up and I'm doing each lobe separately but now I have kind of a darker base of my pumpkin and that's that's how I want to go with that okay now while this guy is drying I'm going to go over to this guy same technique that we did before um, although he has a little bit more yellow in it so this is what I'll do instead of using that pumpkin orange that I had I'm gonna use remember that pretty golden yellow that I used on the leaves I'm gonna get some of that on my brush and I'm gonna actually paint the pumpkin yellow same thing with all the different lobes so here's like one lobe here I guess they're called lobes I think it is if you accidentally paint over the stem, it's not a big deal because um, the stem will be darker and we can paint over um, the yellow with the darker. So it's very um, quick paint of yellow there. Sorry, I think I splashed red from somewhere onto something. Hold on a minute. Yep, I got a little bit of red splashed on here. Um, while you're catching up, I'm going to clean this up. If this happens to you ever, where you get this tiny little spot, if you catch it right away and you get it wet with a brush, you can sometimes, if you're lucky, sort of scrub it away or lighten it. But in this case, nope, I just made it worse because I had something on there. So that just means I'm going to have to crop this. I'll cut that the paper shorter. There's always a way to fix it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so switching to a slightly smaller brush. So I'm gonna use the little small, the smallest one of all. Now I need to make that guy orange. So here's the sample again. The darker color comes from the bottom so that we leave that highlight or the glow up at the top. So I'm going back into that pumpkin orange that I used on this guy. And I'm going to just start from the bottom up on each lobe. I'm not painting all the way over the yellow. I'm leaving yellow at the top, but I'm just kind of getting my outline of the pumpkin. And then I'm pulling that up over the top of some of the yellow. And then I'm stopping with this orange paint before I get to the top. So I'll have like this kind of yellowy 
middle around the stem and darker around the edges. So it's just a little, a little around the edge and I pull it in just a little bit into the yellow. And it's going to flow on its own too, remember, because as it's wet, it flows. As long as the, the um, paper or the paint is still wet, then it still keeps moving. And one last little section here. So you can see why a heat gun or a hair dryer is really important because we wouldn't be able to go on. Maybe some of you can't go on if you didn't have those tools, um, but I wouldn't be able to go on until I wait for it to air dry. Let's do a little bit like this. There, okay. So that's that pumpkin. There's a little bit of a kind of line here that I don't care for, so I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. I'd have a damp brush and I'm just going to scrub a little, just a little bit, and it helps blend it. There we go. That's what happens when you get in a hurry. Okay, pumpkin number three. Oh, uh, this guy is wet, so you can take your choice. If you want a dry big pumpkin, you can, or since they're basically the same color, you can let them touch a little bit and don't worry about it too much. So I'm going to do it. I'm not going to dry it. I'm going to let them touch a little bit and not worry about it. Um, this one on the sample has little highlights of white. So these are areas where I left completely unpainted and that is the white of the paper. So this is kind of one of those stripy pumpkins that you see. So again on dry pumpkin, I didn't pre-wet it. I'm taking my pumpkin orange called Aussie Red Gold and I'm going to do each lobe at a time. But this time I'm going to try and leave some little white highlights of unpainted paper. So here comes one. Here's another guy. This guy in front needs a couple passes because it's bigger. So that gives me a chance to leave some little white highlight in there. The next lobe. The next one. If you find at the end that you have too many whites, you can always paint them out. It's better to leave them and then, um, then have to get rid of them later instead of not having them at all. Okay. So lots of stripes, more than I want, but that's all right because now the next step on that was rinse out your brush. So now you just have a damp brush and you're gonna clean it up. So you're just going back and kind of clean this up, remembering to leave some areas totally dry because if you get it wet, then you lose that white. So just go through and clean up some of it, but then leave some dry areas. And then maybe take a step back from it and decide, hmm, do I have too many whites showing still? Do I need to lose a few? There, I like that. And once you do that, you can do the same thing that you did on the other guy, and that was putting in the darker color at its base, which was, um, I think it was that brown that we had. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was burnt sienna. So it was like that darker orange. And you can pull some of that up from the bottom. Ooh, five minutes. Oh my gosh, can we do it? No, shoot. <laughs> okay, while you're doing that, let me dry mine.
Okay. All right. Um, I need to jam through the rest of this so that you learn how to do it. So um, that might mean that you ignore me and do what you're doing and watch the video later, or it might mean that you just pause your painting and watch what I'm doing. So that's up to you. But I don't want you to not know how to do all these things. So I need to um, show you. Okay, let's do the wheat first. Remember that watered down brown that you used or this uh, kind of like beigey buff color that I used? That is the base for this wheat. Here's what it looks like in the sample. So this is coloring book. It's easy. All you got to do is paint the whole entire top. I don't know what you call it. Uh, the grainy part with whatever that color is, your watered down color or this buff color, whichever one you have. You're gonna paint those and then leave it be. We're gonna to move to something else while this dries. Then let's do the uh, pear. Pears are fun. Here's what it looks like in the sample. It's green, but then there's that nice highlight of yellow. So we're gonna do wet into wet on that. Get it wet first. I, the reason why this always happens to us is, of course, my fault because I'm the one that decides on the paintings, but I want to give you like a decent, interesting painting. I don't want to give you like some kind of tiny little boring thing. I want you to learn some stuff, and so I want you to, I don't want you to feel frustrated that you can't finish it. I want you to feel like, whoa, I got a lot out of that and I can finish it later. So hopefully you feel that way because I get it. You want to finish with me, but it just can't always happen. Okay, I'm using a color called yellow ochre and it looks like this and I'm going to put it right here in the middle of the pear. It's a dirty yellow. Rinse out my brush and then I'm going to get a green and I used that weird, um, I don't want to use that one. Remember that nuclear green that I used on this leaf? It was a little too green for me. So I'm gonna use, where's the one I'm looking for? Um, green Appetite. Yeah, I used that on this leaf. And so I'm gonna put that around. I'll start down here at the base and it's gonna kiss up against that yellow ochre that I just put down. So I'm going around the yellow ochre with this green. And notice it's starting to blend into the green, I mean into the yellow, and that's what I want. What I don't like is that it's exactly the same color as the leaf next door, so I'm going to fix that in a second. Um, the way to fix that on that leaf next door is to, how about we give that leaf a different, give it a little orange on there. There. So now it stands out a little bit against the pear. And that's something that you could do later tomorrow when it's dry. You don't need to worry about it right now. But um, there's our pear. Sometimes pears have a little speckling of brown spots in them. If you want to do that, it's tricky. But I load up my brush with brown and then I'm just going to tap it. And did you see the splatter that went on there? There. And it gives me a little touch of um, brown on the pear. I got a little spot on my grape though. Okay, so we got that. So there's my pear. You could also do a little bit of a rosy colored because sometimes pears have a rosy color to them. Okay, the apple is going to be the same thing, kind of like what we did with that pomegranate or kind of like what we did with the pear. Pretty much everything has a highlight, right? So let's get the apple a little bit wet. I'm going quick. And then I want that nice glowing golden yellow up here. So let me give a couple of highlights on my apple maybe like that. Then you could have, um, I used that beautiful red everywhere, but I don't want to be exactly the same as the pomegranate. So I'm going to take some of the green from the pear. It's going to seem weird, but I'm going to put some green down here in the bottom of the apple like that. And then I am now going to also put red in the apple. So it's a red apple, but there's going to be a tinge of green down at the bottom to make it different from the pomegranate. So here comes the red. I 
rinsed my brush and I'm just going to pull some of this red around because there's quite a lot of it on here so I'm just kind of pulling it around Get a little more on my brush and like pulling it up into the apple if it doesn't seem um, dark enough to you you can add more red I wanted a little more red than that so And again, you can do more than one layer with watercolor. We're doing everything kind of in one layer because we're in a hurry. But if I had time, I'd go back over some of this stuff with more than one layer. Okay, so those are mostly all of the fruits. Um, my wheat is ready, or my whatever it is, oats, wheat, I don't even know, is ready for the little pieces. So with this small brush and some brown paint, all I'm going to do is stamp with it like this. I'm holding the brush and I'm just going to touch it on. And then I change the angle so that it goes this way. And there's wheat. If it's too dark for you, mine is pretty dark. A little tip is, a little trick is you can take a Kleenex and just blot it real quick. Don't press too hard, but it'll lift up a lot of that, and now it's way lighter. If that's not enough for you, you can do it a second time, and you can make it lighter. Um, I used a little bit too dark of a color is probably what happened because I'm in a hurry. I probably wouldn't have chosen that, that dark, but it is what it is. Here's the next one. Stamping with the brush, then change your angle. Okay, and if you need to blot, you blot. You need to use that same brown that you have on your brush, though, to create your stems. So here's the sample with the stems. So this is what happens, is I'm going to take this very carefully and run a line right up and through. And if it skips out here at the end, it's okay. It's better to let it just skip than to try and repeat it and make it kind of like too much. So I just did a couple little pulls and a little too dark for me there so I can blot it up. There we go. Okay, so that's that. Now, the only things that we have left to do are this, the stuff between the grapes and the pumpkin stems. So let me show you the stuff between the grapes first. I have my medium sized brush, which is the number six round. These are bone dry. I don't have to worry about them. I grab a purple that I like. So I'm gonna use kind of that mid-range purple and very gently because you can move this paint around too much and blur it I'm just going to paint over and fill those in and that's it if it looks too stripy just clean and blot your brush and kind of just help it out a little bit there we go so now those are all filled in Your stems are just done with brown or green. So here, this one's probably the driest. Uh, smaller brush. How are we doing? Are we doing okay? I know you're super rushed, but just watch the video later. I apologize, but I bite off more than I can chew with us every single time. And it's just because I want you to get a lot out of it. This one, I'm gonna put some green in on the stem too. So I had first put brown, and now I'm gonna drag some green up around in there. And whatever's left on my brush, I'll use over here. I'll maybe throw a little brown into it. Um, one last thing is going to be this basket. Can you see how the lines are more defined on our sample than they are on this guy? And that's because remember when we first did those lines, it was really wet. And things blurred together but now that it's dry you can be more careful and you can carve out these shapes Hold on, I'm not getting enough paint there we go kind of ah too dark slow down Margaret slow down carve out your shapes I'm looking at my apple and I'm thinking 
I'd like to fix up that apple. I'd like to deepen the color on that. So remember, you can go back and do that. You don't have to do it all now. Um, you can kind of clean these up a little bit if you need to. Not too many. Oh, and I told you it was going to be purple on the shadow of the basket. So the purple that I just used in the grapes is kind of bright. If it's too bright, you can take a little bit of that basket brown and mix into it. And then all you need to do is this. Just pull it up into here. And then you have a shadow. Okay. Oops, I'm splashing everywhere. Okay, all right, that's it, you're done. Let me zoom out so you can see a better picture of the whole thing. If you wanted to, um, what would I finish, what would I fix on this? I would um, definitely put a little shadow maybe underneath it so it's not just hovering and floating in space. Oops, I would add the stem on the pear, which I forgot. I would darken up my apple. And maybe some of these little crack areas, little areas down in here in between the fruits, I would darken up. So here's what they look like side by side. One, the rushed one, and the one that I took a little more time. Not bad, not bad for 90 minutes. So I hope that you learned a lot and it was really great having you here. Thank you for joining me on the very last one of the year. So um, I want to move the camera for a second so I can say goodbye to you in real life and then I'll put it back on these samples so you can watch. Remember, um, if you want to post your picture, you can put it on Sacramento Art Classes Students, which is our Facebook group. Um, if you're not already in the group, just ask to be in the group and uh, I will approve you, of course. Um, the sacramentoartclasses.com is my website where you can see the upcoming classes or sign up for things where you can get a newsletter um, and stay tuned for new stuff in the new year so i'm going to move the camera now and say goodbye to you where are you there you are okay there i am you're already there but i'm here anyway thank you very much for coming it's been a really good year and i'm Thank you for sticking with this. It's, it's always fun to do these things. I'm sorry I frustrate you by doing things so fast at the end, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. So um, I hope to see you next year and I hope you have a great holiday season and a great new year. Um, even though that's like a long time away, we're almost at the new year. So uh, thank you again and have a great night. Okay, I'll put it back down so you could see what's going on on the table here. There we go. Um, let's move some of this junk out of the way so that you can see everything. So funny, no matter how much room you have at your table, you always end up not having enough space. So, okay, that's it. I am going to say good night to you. Mahalo, Veronica, Elizabeth. You're going to see me tomorrow. I'll send you that link like I talked about pretty soon. Thanks, Suzanne. Thanks, Rhonda. And everybody have a great night. Um, I'll leave this up for a couple minutes. Thanks. Bye.